this November, Call of Duty goes back to its roots with the game set in World War II. And I am at the same time excited for boots on the ground gameplay, yet also nervous that Activision will again mess up one of the most beloved franchises in gaming history. I hated last year's Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. I thought the campaign was cliched and repetitive, and the multiplayer was at best broken and at worst not fit for purpose. It had poorly designed maps and some of the worst gunplay in any multiplayer game. I spent about five minutes in the zombie mode and gave it up as one big joke. I am, however, a big Call of Duty fan, having put hundreds of hours into Black Ops 1, 2 and 3, all of the Modern Warfare games, World at War, Advanced Warfare, and I've even spent time with the original games. Before Activision announced that Call of Duty was going back to World War 2, I was done with the franchise. I'd spent a lot of money on Infinite Warfare, you know, I'd got the special packs that included the remaster of Modern Warfare, and also the season pass, and I wasn't going to get suckered again into wasting that amount of money. With the change of setting back to World War II though, I started to feel the Call of Duty hype. I became very excited for the game and almost pulled the trigger on a pre-order, but then I felt it best to take a step backwards and consider the situation. The developers at the helm for COD World War II are Sledgehammer, who, ooh, was it three years ago now, gave us Advanced Warfare and before that contributed to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. The question is, can and will Sledgehammer deliver a campaign, a zombies and a multiplayer experience to compete with the best Call of Duties, the Black Ops, the Modern Warfares and, you know, and the three original games? Or will Call of Duty die with this year's instalment of the franchise? In Advanced Warfare's campaign, which came out way back in 2014, you played as a soldier who had been injured while fighting in Korea, and then you went on an adventure to stop the game's main bad guy, played by Kevin Spacey, from trying to take over the world with his private army. The story was a bit convoluted, but it was interesting, and I think it does show that Sledgehammer have the capability to produce not only a technically advanced looking campaign, but they also understand the importance of a good story. The set pieces were fun, the shooting was hectic but manageable, and the characters normal enough to empathise with. I played the campaign from beginning to end on the Xbox 360, and I'm kind of disappointed that there isn't going to be a sequel to really tie up the story and what happens next to the main characters in the Advanced Warfare world. I came late to the Advanced Warfare Zombies experience, as you could only access it if you bought the Season Pass, but I've got to say that, you know, it's great. Um, the exosuits bring an interesting twist to fast and frantic zombies play. A top-notch cast of actors, including John Malkovich and Bill Paxton, made the zombies story engaging too. Being able to boost over the top of a charging horde of zombies, as well as the slightly different way you levelled up throughout the Advanced Warfare Zombies experience, was really nice, and it was just a damn shame they hid it behind the paywall that was the season pass. The new mechanic in Infinite Warfare was, in effect, those exosuits, an external mechanical skeleton that gave your player superb strength and speed. You could jump high, you could punch harder, you could slide, and you could go across big drops. This meant that Sledgehammer's multiplayer was always going to be a lot different to that of Ghosts and Black Ops. Your ghost, could, your ghost, your player, could now not only double jump to reach high places and evade fire, but shoot down while jumping, and even move sideways in the air too. You could dash forwards, and then with different exosuit loadouts, you could have an extra burst of speed, hover in the air, or even go invisible for a short period of time. Advanced Warfare was the Call of Duty I cut my multiplayer teeth upon, so I'm biased about how good it is. Sure, the sideways boosting is a pain. And to be honest, if you go back and play now, there's not that many matches available. And obviously the people who are playing have been playing it for a long time. But in my opinion, the maps were good. The gunplay was good. It was let down by skill-based matchmaking, which led to laggy servers and hosts, unless you had a specialist router like the NetDoomer to handle it. The names of the maps still resonate with me today. Detroit, uh, Retreat, and Laos to name 
but three. Then there were the guns and their famous variants. Who could forget the BAL-27 and the Obsidian Steed, or the ASM-1 with the speakeasy? Advanced Warfare multiplayer was good, but Black Ops 3 multiplayer was definitely better, so hopefully Sledgehammer will have learnt from the community feedback and will drop the skill-based matchmaking, drop the pay-to-win gun variants, and improve on their already good map design. Ultimately, whether Sledgehammer will be able to deliver the COD World War II experience we want in the campaign, zombies and the multiplayer will depend on how much respect they pay to the period and to Call of Duty itself. If they look at DICE's Battlefield 1 and the way they treated World War 1 and apply that to their game, and then also look at the Call of Duty multiplayers that we've all enjoyed, such as Black Ops 2 and Modern Warfare, then we could be in for a treat indeed. The elephant in the room is Activision, with their accountants eyeing up pay-to-win supply drops, silly skins and taunts, and all those add-ons that spoil the latest Call of Duties. I get the feeling that if Activision trust Sledgehammer to make the World War II game that they want to, in the way that EA trusted DICE with Battlefield 1, then Call of Duty World War 2 could be the Call of Duty we've all been waiting for on this generation of consoles. I just hope that last November when Battlefield 1 came out and Infinite Warfare came out within a couple of weeks of each other, and the Activision executives played Battlefield 1 comparing it to their offering Infinite Warfare and they realised how crap Infinite Warfare was compared to Battlefield 1 that they said to Sledgehammer do what you need to do. Anyway, as an aside to that, I did actually pre-order Call of Duty World War 2. The multiplayer beta is coming up this weekend. So fingers crossed that it's going to be great. Anyway, that's enough from me. Please put your questions and your comments what you think Call of Duty World War 2 is going to be like. Or maybe we, you know, we can add a few more comments after we've played the beta and <laughs> we have a little bit of discussion about that. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you again soon.